Hi, this is Quad, and in this video, I want to tell you about pulmonary circulation. So let's draw a quick one: bronchus, bronchioles, and more splitting. Eventually, there will be this final split, and uh, here you have many alveoli. Maybe you see some here, you see some there. This is the branching point zero. This is the branching point one. Somewhere here, you have branching point sixteen. So this is the branching point two. Uh, this is the last branching point, 23. Here to here, they are for conducting the air. There's no alveoli for gas exchange with the blood. But here to here, you can do exchange of uh, gas because there is alveoli. Now there are two important blood system for the lung. The first one is from the descending aorta, so good oxygenated blood will flow to the lung system and they will travel and supply nutrition to the conducting portion of your lung and also to the pipes of the exchange portion. And this will come back via azygous vein, intercostal uh, vein, etc. And this is the bronchial artery. And the next is the, uh, from right ventricle, it'll travel and it's going to travel with this bronchioles and all these airways and they will engulf or go between all these alveoli and eventually come together and exit out. And this exit is going to go back to the left atrium and left atrium to left ventricle, left ventricle pumps to the entire body, including the descending side and the ascending side and the blood will travel to the body and come back again later and this system is the uh, pulmonary artery going to the lung and the pulmonary vein coming back from the lung and this is the uh, alveolar capillaries so and some of this blood instead of coming back from the pulmonary vein can also supply the blood to this uh, artery called the uh, hilar artery and this is in between the um, pulmonary membranes and they run between that to make sure the membrane that surrounds uh, lung is uh, good. Okay, now let's focus on the pulmonary artery, alveolar capillary and pulmonary vein series. So let me redraw them here. This is the pulmonary artery. It's going to split, let's say three and come back and this is going to go back via pulmonary vein. So this is the alveolar uh, capillary. Okay, so blood pressure is important to understand. You have about 15 millimeters of mercury pressure there. Here you got about 10, five less, another five less, five. Um, 15 millimeter mercury, what is it and how much is it? Well, let's look at the systematic uh, artery. The blood pressure there is about 93 millimeter mercury. Now, systematic capillary is about 20 millimeter mercury. Systematic vein varies depending on the places. So the systematic capillary's blood pressure is already greater than the uh, pulmonary artery is 15. That's kind of embarrassing as an artery to have a low blood pressure. Now let's talk about the uh, blood volume. The total body uh, has about 4.5 liters of blood and uh, that in the lungs system in this PAAC PV circuit is going to be about 10% of that so 450 milliliter and there's going to be about 130 milliliters of blood in this artery and 110 in uh, capillary vessels Finally, about 200 in the uh, pulmonary vein vessels. Now, um, by the way, all of these capillaries, they touch alveoli, maybe some here, maybe some on top of this uh, section. There are many of them. There are 300 million alveoli. And if you add up all the surface area of the alveoli for glass exchange, that's the size of a tennis court. So huge. And the blood available in this vessel is 110 millimeters. So this is going to be a soda can, about one third of the soda can, 
and what your lung is doing is spreading this blood to this tennis court. That's incredible. Um, and the lung does that by keeping this capillary vessel very, very small. So this capillary vessel is the size of about 10 micrometer. By the way, your red blood cell here, one squeezing through the vessel, has a size of about 10 micrometer. So it's designed to fit just red blood cell. And here's one alveolus, here's another alveolus. As this red blood cell passes through here, uh, this has two alveoli to uh, do the gas exchange. So it's kind of efficient. And also most of the gas exchange happens by the time a halfway point is reached, given that you're coming here and getting out there. So lung is pretty efficient at gas exchange. Okay, now let's talk about the blood pressure again. 15 millimeter mercury is just enough for the blood to go from the heart, so right ventricle, 50 millimeter mercury, and get to this apex of the lung right here. That's just enough to uh, send the blood to the lung. On the other hand, 93 millimeter mercury is enough force to uh, send the blood to the tip of raised hand. Now, because um, of this weak uh, blood pressure in the pulmonary circulation, the pulmonary circulation is a very passive system. Not many active things maintain the blood pressure here. Uh, the systematic arteries, you know, maybe same size, but they have a lot of smooth muscles, which do the main job of controlling the blood pressure. Yes, the left ventricle is bigger and stronger than the right ventricle, but to have good blood pressure change and to maintain high blood pressure, you need also this smooth muscles to help you with that. Pulmonary arteries have only a little bit of smooth muscle. It's so little that it's hard to distinguish pulmonary artery from pulmonary vein when you look at the microscope. So you have to look into their um, external lamina because arteries have two lamina and veins have only one. Uh, same with systematic arteries, two lamina and veins only have one. But another thing that can help you distinguish them is pulmonary arteries run next to these uh, airways. So you can look at that distance between the airway to see um, if it's artery or vein. But anyways, so the weakness here makes it so that blood pressure of the lung is going to be largely a function of uh, non-lung stuff like heart, uh, also the volume of that thoracic cavity, um, also ventilation, how strong the air is that's coming, and also position of your body. If you're laying down, blood pressure can be different than when you're standing up. But there's some control here because you have some smooth muscles, so there is sympathetic nervous system to control the blood pressure and also you have oxygen and pH. So here um, when lung senses hypoxia in certain region, lung can do this thing called pulmonary hypoxia vasoconstriction. The idea is that the lung will constrict that part of the artery and stop the blood from going through there if this place has low oxygen because lung doesn't want to waste that trip of blood to go through poorly ventilated place and uh, return um, not so great blood back to the body. And also when babies are born, um, pulmonary hypoxic vasoconstriction is already active as they're coming out of the womb. But then when the baby takes the first breath, a lot of oxygen will come in and increase the oxygen content of that baby's lung. And this uh, pulmonary hypoxic vasoconstriction will be turned off. This is what they mean by activating the lung of the baby. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit more about the blood pressure. Um, it's really important to distinguish the pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, which do not touch alveoli, and then the uh, alveolar capillaries that touch the alveoli. So let me explain. Here is the x-axis with the volume, y-axis the blood pressure. The um, Alveolar capillaries, as you increase the volume of the lung, what happens is that all of these alveoli will get big. And as they get big, they will squish the capillary vessels in between them. So the pressure within those capillaries will go from low to high. By the way, the minimum here is going to be the residual volume. Maximum here is the total lung capacity. Zero is somewhere here. Um, this is the amount of air that you cannot take out. 
changing the blood pressure in the capillary is not going to go straight up like this. It goes something like this and boom. So this is because here you have a couple phenomena happening. The first one is here's a capillary one, here's capillary two, and maybe it's on an alveoli here. And this third capillary. So as you breathe in, as this is going to the right, the third capillary can help you because of this increase in pressure. And volume is going to go from this to now big volume, right? Now this capillary can handle more blood flow. And as you increase even more blood pressure, what happens is now that these three capillaries can get bigger. So the other one is in the back maybe. So now the capillaries got bigger. So there is this recruitment of new capillaries and there's also this distension of the capillary size. By increasing the volume of the capillary vessels together, you uh, make sure that the blood pressure doesn't go too high. And that's why there's this resistance, but then eventually this um, feature will be less effective. So yes, it goes from low to high, but there's this nice uh, curve. Okay, now the pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein, they don't touch alveoli, but they uh, have changing blood pressure as well. So they go from actually high to low. This is because uh, here is a lung and these vessels run, let's say, around here and here. They don't touch alveoli too much. As lung expands, you breathe in and this means you're going from left to right. What's happening is that the vessels, these ones, are squished in the beginning, but as lung size expand, they get to now get pulled and open. So you have more volume here. And because of that, as you inhale or increase the size of your lung, volume increases from small to big, and then the pressure decreases from high to low. It drops quickly and then slows down the drop because the eventually, even if you keep putting the air in, the size is not gonna be too different from this maximum size. You're just stretching it at that point. That's why the decrease is fast in the beginning and then slows down in a bit. Okay, now let's add this pressure here to this pressure to get the total pressure of the uh, pulmonary circuit, this circuit, at this volume. So you just add this much to here, here. If you do that whole process, the blood pressure of that system is gonna be this one. So here, by the way, is the uh, functional respiratory uh, volume. Um, here is basically the amount of volume in your lung after you take a normal breath out. So breathe in, breathe out. Here, this is the volume. And here, as you breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. You are changing the blood pressure. As you breathe in, the main driver of change of blood pressure is going to be this uh, AC that is squished by these alveolar. So breathe in, alveolar gets big, squish the blood vessels in between the alveoli and increase the pressure. But if you keep breathing in and forcefully, then you will squish it more and this increase is gonna to contribute to this increase of the blood pressure of the lung circuit system. Now, from the regular breathe out state, if you breathe out forcefully more, push all the air out, you're going this direction because now the lung size is getting smaller and smaller because of the smaller lung size, the PA and PV will be squished more and this leads to the increasing blood pressure when you take the air out. Now let's talk a little bit about this uh, lung expansion. So here is the lung. Um, just because of gravity, you have more blood here, a little bit less, much less. And I think this is why body fit more alveoli Bottom here, bigger alveoli, much bigger alveoli. Body fit more alveoli at the bottom by just squishing them. And also because of this, when lung expands, lung is gonna go like this. So this change delta is much greater than this delta. This is because these small ones will change its volume more than the top one. And finally, this lung has different blocks. Um, when we talk about this regular circuit going from artery to capillaries to vein, uh, this happens because the pressure of artery is greater than the pressure of uh, alveolar capillary, which is greater than the pressure of the vein. By the way, this is a good surrogate for the pressure of uh, alveolar space because 
as this pressure goes up, this pressure goes up because of this squishing. And that's also why this happens. Now, this is called zone two setting when you have this uh, inequality. And you can also have a zone three where still pressure of the artery is greater. But now what happens is that pressure of the vein increased. Now here you have pressure of the vein and that is going to be greater than the pressure of the alveolar capillary. Why is that? So this promoted itself to get to number two. This is because here you have a zone two, probably around here, but as you go down, zone three starts to show up because the gravity again is pulling the blood down and the veins just have lots of blood in it. Look, 200 milliliters right here. And because of that, the veins now have more blood in it. And because of that amount, you'll have a little bit higher pressure than the alveolar capillary. And also alveolar capillary pressure is a little bit over zero. I'm just gonna say it's just zero or maybe one millimeter mercury or maybe two millimeter mercury. That is because all the air from here down to here, they're all touching the same system. So the amount of uh, pressure is going to be constant throughout that space. So this is constant, but now the vein uh, increased its blood pressure due to gravity. But there are also two other zones. So one is when the uh, AC, which is just tiny bit, is greater than the pressure of uh, artery and that is greater than the pressure of vein. This happens because AC, usually it's zero or one or two tiny bit, but when you add some kind of positive ventilation, um, then this can win. Also, if you have shock, your body's leaking a lot of uh, blood, then the artery pressure is gonna drop and zone one is thus pathogenic zone. Could be anywhere, as long as this inequality is true, that place is called zone one. And finally, you have uh, zone four. Zone four is basically same as zone three, all the inequality holds. But what happens if the uh, alveolar space just collapsed? Then this is going to be collapsed. And because of that, the pressure in this vessels will be infinity high, it collapsed, and blood was not gonna flow. And this is called atelectatic zone.